And the last situation to compare two groups where we don't want to assume normality, we're going to start with the number tested data. So I've done a similar thing here that we did for the percentage resistant in the creating of the split data, but I've done it here for the number tested, so the number of samples tested. If you recall, we can pull up one of the years here for 2011, and we can see already from the histogram that the data is very skewed. We can see that the mean is 190, the median is 99, the distance from the minimum to the median and the median to the maximum are not the same. Similarly, we're not looking at the same distance for the quantiles. We have a very large standard deviation um, in comparison uh, to our mean. So at the very least, we're looking at something that's very flat. It has a wide standard deviation. But it doesn't look like just from looking at these parts of the information that we have normally distributed data. And if I then look at the normal quantile plot, we can really see here that we don't have normally distributed data. The points do not follow along this diagonal line, and the majority of them are outside the confidence bounds. So we would not be safe in assuming that this underlying distribution is normally distributed. Though we could potentially say with the central limit theorem, if we were looking at this overall group with a sample size of 42, that our means could be normally distributed but you may not be comfortable with that, and that's okay. We do still have a relatively small size here of 42. It does meet the central limit theorem, but the evidence against normality is quite obvious. So we don't want to rely on the underlying distribution being normal. Let's go ahead and take a look at the distribution in fit y by x of our east-west regions for number tested. So east-west for number tested. And here is the same figure that we've seen before. I can go ahead and take my x-axis to proportional. I could go ahead and look at my jittered points if I wanted to. Um, what might be nice here in this situation uh, is to go ahead and add in the box plots. And you can see here that they're very squished towards the low end of the distributions, and we have at least three extreme outliers, two in the east group and one in the west group. If we ask for the quantiles and the means and standard deviations from these distributions, we can see here that we're again dealing with 42 uh, states. We can look at our means here for east and west, uh, and they are not close to the medians, indicating again this is likely not normal data. We can see the spreads and the quantiles aren't even, and we could also ask for the normal quantile plots. And oh boy, oh goodness, we really don't have equally distri or normally distributed data here. Both of our groups have this long tail and then a steep curve to the outer, steep uh, uptick to the outliers. They are not along the lines here. These lines are crossed, which would indicate unequal standard deviation. Look at how big those are down here. But we don't actually care about that. The order of our assessments here is normality first. If normality is warranted, you can concern yourself with the standard deviation. But normality is clearly not warranted here. We have a small enough sample size of 42. Our two groups are both under 30. Our means and medians are not close. And boy, this, this normal quantile plot doesn't even uh, look to begin to be normally distributed. So in this case, what we're going to want to do is the non-parametric option. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the means and standard deviations because we'll not be using those for description. We would want to describe the data by the n in the group, as well as the median and the interquartile ranges. And then we would like to ask Jump for our non-parametric test. You have several tests that are given here. We're going to use the Wilcoxon test. So one-way ANOVA using ranks. It's equivalent to what is known as the Mann-Whitney test. When we move into ANOVA with more than true groups, it will be called the Kruskal-Wallis test. 
They all do the same thing. They were just developed by different statisticians for different purposes. When you only have two groups, it is called the Wilcoxon or sometimes the Wilcoxon Man Whitney. So go ahead and click on that. And what jump brings you up is the rank sums for Kruskal Wallace here. You can ignore it. What it will give you that you need are the counts, but these sum scores and expected scores are going to be different for every set of data that you have, for every different sample size. Essentially what it's doing is it's finding the overall median for all of 2011, and then it's sorting each data point as to being above or below that median. It is then summing up by group these ranked scores. If we had equal medians, then we'd have an equal number of points above the median and below the median for east and for west, and the sums of those ranks would be equal. That's what it's doing. Really, what you need to know is it's comparing the center of the distribution. It's really looking to see if the centers of our distributions for east and west are similar. It's not determining or comparing normal, normal distributions or normality of distributions. It's not comparing the means. It's looking at the medians of the groups. Our null hypothesis here would be equality of medians. The alternative would be not equal. We will use this p-value here, the two sample test normal approximation. And in this case, it is telling us that the median number of samples tested for east and west locations is not statistically significantly different. And all we report here is the p-value. You don't report s or z. You don't report the scores of the sums. You simply report the p-value. If you need a one-sided test, you can determine that based on the notes in section 16 like you would for a t-test. It would either be half of this or one minus half of this p-value depending upon the direction of your test. And that's covered in the section 16 notes. By and large, what you'll be testing with two samples is mostly a quality, not a quality, if you don't have an idea of what it is you're looking at. Um, but you can figure out the one-sided tests if you need them for medians, but with medians, we're generally looking at equality or not equality. And that is how you do the non-parametric test. So when normality is not warranted, if you know you have not normal data or you have small sample sizes where your total group size is less than 30, you can go ahead and do this Wilcoxon, Kruskal-Wallis, Mann-Whitney rank sums test, or you can simply call it the Wilcoxon test.